Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome uh, to this series of electrical A1 circuit uh, PEO exam. This question is uh, basically it's about DC analysis, okay? And uh, this question is uh, basically is uh, about uh, uh, nodal analysis. So this is the question number nine from the DC analysis. And a question number five, among those nine DC questions, this is number five in the nodal analysis. So as you can see, nodal here is basically a very common type of uh, questions. So here we have uh, a circuit that has dependent and independent sources. Uh, it uh, basically required to calculate the node voltages, uh, required to find currents, power, and so on and so forth. So let's start here. So how to approach the nodal question again? So you need to identify the node. So we have here one node. This is another node. This is another node, okay? And this is the common node that we call it the reference V equal to zero. Here there is another node as well. Now I will call this is V1. This is V2. V2 is the voltage from here to the ground, okay? So it is from the node to the reference ground. Now, the voltage here at this point is minus 100 volt. This is will be needed to calculate the current later on. And the voltage here is 150 volt. So first we assign the node voltages and then we'll start basically to apply the nodal analysis. So this node, I already have the voltage of it, so I don't touch it. This node, I already also know the voltage, so I don't touch it. This is the reference, I don't touch it as well. So I left with V1 and V2. Now V1 and V2, they are both attached to a current uh, dependent voltage source. So we cannot apply KCL to V1, we cannot apply KCL to V2. The reason for that, because we don't know the current in between. I have to assume the current, and this will complicate the problem. So how we handle this? Here we use something we call the supernode concept. Okay, so the supernode concept, basically, we assume this whole node that comprises V1 and V2 is just one node. And we apply KCL to it. But before, we can see here that V1 minus V2 is equal to 8I0. The difference between V1 and V2 is equal to the voltage between these two points, which is 8I0, and here is 8I, this here is I0, the dependent current. Okay. Now we apply KCL to the supernode. My first equation here. Let's apply KCL to the super node. So assume all the currents are leaving. Now I don't care about anything else. Just assume all the currents are basically leaving. So this is the current here. And this is I0 given. I will keep I0 as it is. So we go to the left side. So we have V1 minus 150 divided by 150 plus V1 over 100. Then we move to the other side. So I don't care about what is happening between V1 and V2. Okay, I look to this super node as one, one big node. So when you go to the other side, so we have here plus V2 minus minus 100, which is this volt at this point, divided by 200. Because the current that goes here is the voltage difference between V2 to the ground minus the voltage here divided by the 200 plus I0 equal to zero. And this is my second equation. So we have two equations, but we have three unknowns. So I need to find what is this I0, okay? So basically here your I, apply KCL. So you apply KCL at V2 here for case for I0. So your I0 is entering the node, I0. 10 amp is entering the node, and the current here is leaving the node is equal to V2 divided by 50. So your I0 equal to V2 over 50 minus, minus 10, 
and this is my third equation. So we have here three equations, three unknowns, then we can basically uh, start to solve them. So we'll start from one, so from one. I will do some math, but you can do that the rest at your, by yourself. So V1 minus V2 equal to eight, times I0, which is V2 over 50 minus 10. Now, when we uh, basically uh, simplify this, we will get 25 V1 minus 29 V2 equal to minus 2,000. And this is equation number, number four. Now we come to equation two and also substitute. Okay, so in to replace I0 with number three, with equation three, and modify the, or play with the equations together, you will get this uh, basically last equation, which is 10 V1 plus 15 V2 is equal to 6,300. And this is equation number five. So now these two equations, four and five, it has basically just two unknowns. So if we solve for them, you will find that, now here back, this is your V1 and this is your V2. Your V1 is basically equal to 229.6. I will keep only one or sometimes two decimals. Volt and V2 is equal to 266.9 volt. If you notice so far, I did not solve any part of the question because in nodal analysis the most important thing is to know every single node voltages once you know them you can find everything else this node is 150 this node is minus 100 volt and this node v equal to zero so now i know every single node voltage now let's start to see what is the requirements so we want to find i zero this is your I0. We already have the formula for I0. This is your I0. So your I0 is equal to V2 divided by 50 minus 10. We know Vt, V2. So this is equal to minus 4.7 amp. What does it mean when the current angle is, so the sign is negative? It means the current actually is going to the other way around. So it basically the current is going in the opposite direction. But if we uh, basically in, in circuit, if I say the current in this direction is equal to two, uh, 20 amps, this is equivalent if I say that the current is going there is minus 20 amps. These two are completely equivalent. I don't need to do any change in anything. And then I want to find also V0. Now, V0 is the potential difference between V1 and this 150 volt. So V0 equal to V1 minus 150. So it is 229.6 minus 150. And this will give me 79.6 volt. So this is basically the first requirement. Then it says here, calculate the current in each branch, okay? So now I start to assume current. So assume the current here is I1. Assume the current is leaving the positive. This is your I2. This is your I3. This is your I4. This is I0, which I already calculated. This is basically your I5. The current here is 10 amp, I already know. So I have five currents that I need to basically calculate. So we we'll start from I1. My I1 is equal to, now I assume the current leaving the positive, so going in that direction, so it is 150 minus V1, which is 229.6, divided by the resistance in between, which is 150. And this will give me a current equal to minus 5, uh, minus 0.53 amps. So again, it means that the current actually is going to the other, other direction. Your I2 is equal to V1 over 100, which is equal to 229.6 divided by 100. And this will give me approximately 2.3 amps. 
your I. Now we want to find I3. I3 we find from KCL. So I3, enter the node, plus I1 equal to I2. So I3, I2, I3 equal to I1 minus I2, which is equal to, now we substitute here. Sorry, it is uh, I2 minus I1. I3 plus I1 equal to I2. So I3 equal to I2 minus I1. This is I2 and this is I1. Uh, so minus I1 of that. So we get 2.83 amps. Then we have I4 is equal to V2 minus minus 100 divided by 200. That's equal to 266.9 minus or plus 100 divide by 200 and this will give me 1.83 amps and finally i5 is equal to v2 which is 266.9 divided by 50 and this will give me 5.3 amps now you can also check kcl at this node okay so we have i0 equal to i5 minus 10. So I0, we already have it as minus 4.7. Is this equal to I5, which is 5.3 minus 10, which is correct. So this is also verify that we are in the, in the, cor in the, right, uh, in the right page. Okay, perfect. Then we are done with this. Show that the magnitude of the total power generated equal to the total power absorbed. Now here it can cause some confusion because we have some of the currents are positive, some of the currents are negative. So how to deal, how to decide if the element is absorbing power or supplying power? I'll make it very easy for you. For R, for R, it is always absorbed. R always absorbed. There is no way that R can be generating power. Now we have the supply. Okay, so for the supply, if we have here plus minus, this is your V, and we assume the current I is leaving. So if the V, both the V and the I are positive, so this is positive, and this is positive, so it means generated. If one of them is negative, it means that it is basically absorbed. In other words, if the current negative, it means the current is going in that direction. If the current is going in that direction, it means that it is like a battery is charging. You are charging the battery. So the supply can be generating or can be uh, basically absorbing. So let's start first with the generators. Okay, so let's start with P of the 150 volt. Again, it's V times I. Always, it's V times I for the generators. Now, the current I1, we found that the current, we assume it in that direction, is equal to minus 0.53 amps. So the current actually, if it's negative, then actually the current is going in that direction as a positive 0.53 amps. So the, when the current enters the positive terminal of the supply, it means that you are charging the supply. Okay? And it means that you are basically absorbed. So this is equal to 150 times 0.53 equal to 79.5 and this is absorbed let's go to the 8i0 the power of 8i0 is equal to 8 now the current we assume it is i3 so i3 when we calculate i3 it was positive equal to 2.83 so that's good however i0 itself was negative the the uh, sign of i0 and i0 we, we we found i0 is equal to uh, minus 4.7 so this is equal to minus 8 times 4.7 so basically the polarity actually here is reversed plus minus so it means that the current actually is entering the positive it's not leaving the positive because the polarity has to be reserved so this one is also it's a supply but is absorbed so this is 8 times 4.7 okay so that's the voltage times i3 which is 
2.83 and this will give me 106.4 absorbed. Let's go to the 100 volt. In the 100 volt, the current that we uh, we have is I4, and your I4 is basically equal to one in that direction, 1.83. So the current is positive when we assume it leaving the positive terminal, and the voltage also is positive here. Okay, then it will be generated. So the P of the 100 volt is equal to 100 times 1.83 and this will give me 183 but this is will be generated the final supply is the 10 amp the p of the 10 amp source now the 10 amp source is basically the current is going in that direction okay and the current that we assumed here is i5 I5 will, when the current enter uh, basically a passive element, it will have a polarity plus minus. So the voltage here, it have plus minus polarity, plus minus, and the current leaving the positive, the voltage is positive, the current is positive, then this will be generated. So this is equal to the voltage across the 10 amp is the I5. Your I5 is 5.3 times the 50. So this is Ohm's law. It gives you the voltage between this point and this point, which is the voltage across the current source, times the 10 from the current source, and this will give me a total equal to 2,650. Of course, everything in watt here. It's good to have the unit, and this is generated. So now we are done with the sources. This is the only trick, how to find the power from the sources. Now for the resistors, you have one, two, three, four resistors. It's always I square R and it is always absorbed. There's no, no question asked. So you'll have the P of the 150 and this, this will give me minus 0.53 squared. Because of the square, it doesn't really matter the sign of the current times 150 and this uh, will give me 42.1 absorbed and then P of the 100 is equal to 2.3 which is I2 squared times the 100 and this will give me 50.529 watt absorbed you have the P of the 200 is equal to which is this one so with the current that we have, which is 1.83 square times 200, and this will give me 669.8 watt absorb. And finally, we have the P of the 50 ohms, which is equal to 5.3 square times the 50, and this will give me 1,000. 404.5 watt again absorbed. Now, if we calculate everything, the power, the total power that is absorbed, sum all the absorbed power equal to 2831.3 watt. The power that is supplied is equal to 2833 watt. There is a very, very slight difference. This is because of the approximations that I have I have done. So this is an interesting comprehensive nodal analysis that first you start by finding the node, node voltages and then you can find anything in the in the circuit.